You say that you and Mr. Kaiser have been together for six years, have a three-year-old son together, but claim he's now denying your six-month-old son, Isaac, and you're here to prove that he is the father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Kaiser, you acknowledge one child with Ms. England, but say Isaac is not yours. You say that during your separation from Ms. England, she slept with another man, and you are 100% sure he is the father. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. England, why is Mr. Kaiser accepting one child, but not the other? We've been through everything. I've supported him. I've took care of him. I've turned him into the man he is. You know, I took him from ashy to classy. And <laughs> he's not supportive at all of it. And he wants to say that it's not his. I've always been classy. No, that can be debated. Okay. She um... Y'all, she knows why. She knows why I've denied the baby. She stayed gone for three months with this other man. Did you move in with another man? Yes, Ms. Your Honor. England? Yes, Your Honor, I did. So, wait. You all in a relationship. I want to get the yes, background. Ma'am. We were in a relationship for four and a half years okay. before we finally split and I went with the other man. Okay. And so, during that time, you what? had one child. Yes. Right. What, yes. And then during the split... During the split, Isaac was conceived. All right. And so, basically, your relationship is completely on the brink. Like, the, the Com- stakes are high. If it doesn't get solved today, it's over. I can't do it anymore. It's... It's done. Because it's that stressful. It's that... Right. Str- right. Everything is an argument. If we're talking about what's for dinner, peanut butter and jelly, fries, b- burgers, everything is... That's not my baby. A paternity question, it permeates every aspect of your life. And so I can understand what you're saying. Yo, the you're just talking I... about dinner and we're talking about paternity. We're still arguing about it. Yes. Is it difficult for you to, to handle all of this, Mr. Kaiser? The, yes, the, ma'am. Just the she, feeling of not... You don't knowing... understand what I'm going through, you other. The whole time, I stepped up back, true enough. But I accepted her back because we already had a two-year-old son together. You know what I'm saying? So, you accepted her back. You said, you know what, let's try again. But she was still pregnant by this other man the whole time we were together, Your Honor. Your Honor, that's not... So, the whole time... Let me ask you this, Mr. Kaiser. The whole time she was pregnant and you accepted her back, you're thinking the whole time and she's pregnant by another man or were you thinking this could potentially be my child as well? I didn't think it was my child, Your Honor. Your Honor... I didn't didn't think it was my child. I, I, I always thought it was the other man's child. I can't tell her another man, baby, y'all. Especially the man she was cheating on me with. <laughs> I was not cheating. She, I never wanted she to said, cheat. Y'all, she said she wasn't cheating on me, right? But she had the other man's phone number long before she moved out. And she was still staying in my house. How is it his house? And I'm working it 12 w- hours a day to take care of the bills for that house. I pay, I pay the I was rent. working the graveyard shift. He was supposed to be home taking care of the kids. I interact with the kids all the time. All the time. The whole time she was at work. I can't and say that. Pop at home take care of the kids, y'all. She on the job uh, messing around with this other man while I'm at home take care of the kids. I'm on the job messing around with another man. I'm working 12 hours in a dog bed factory. And that's how you got his phone number. And that's how I got it. Well, if you would have been taking care of business at home, no other man would have been able to even talk to me. But you were too busy I'll, fighting. I understand that. You were too busy finding a reason to argue at any given second. So... Obviously, there was a breakdown in the relationship. Your Honor, my and... sister passed away. And instead of this man right here taking care of me and hugging me and telling me everything would be okay, he started to fight and left. But y'all... y'all... He left. He, do, he wasn't there. The other man is the one who was texting my phone saying, are you okay? Why was he texting your phone? How you have your phone number? Why weren't you taking care of me? We was arguing all the time during that time. Exactly. You all still I... arguing now. I can't even get a word in. So, there obviously was a breakdown in the relationship. Right. Yes, ma'am. And you ended up breaking up completely. Yes, ma'am. And the only reason that I left him, Your Honor, is because the other man was paying more attention than he was. If you At have your... Time... If your woman is working 12 hours graveyard, when your woman comes home, wouldn't you like to have a little breakfast or she goes to sleep? I had to put our baby to sleep when I'm coming home at 5 o'clock in the morning. I have to put my baby to sleep. Then I have to do my school classes Not every online. Day. Not every day. Not Everything every day. was all on Shirley and nothing was on Mr. Not every day. She didn't have to put the baby to sleep every day, y'all. I left because when my sister died and he was not there for me and I needed a shoulder to cry on, I didn't have it. Right, so you went with so this other guy. I went with the other man because he made it unbearable for me at the house. He and now fight, you say that this mind. man, Mr. Kaiser, is baby Isaac's biological father. Yes, ma'am. Okay, listen. The question yes. is... Yes. ...is oh. the timing in which he was conceived. I can explain that to you right here. I'm 100% sure. Great. And I have now evidence. we're back on track. Ryan, can I see that evidence, please? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, on the 25th of March is the last time I had been sexual with the other man. 
on the 25th of March. Yes, you were intimate with the other guy. Yes, ma'am. Keep going. Okay. Uh, on the 28th, me and Mr. Kaiser, we got back together. I came back to where he was at with our children. Mm -hmm. We had unprotected sex on the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, the 31st, and the 1st. Mm -hmm. And my conception date is the 30th of March. I had sex with the other man before the conception window. Were you sleeping with this other he man wanted... unprotected? <laughs> no, ma'am. So on the 5th, you take a pregnancy test and yes. it comes back negative. Yes. In your mind, you're saying, well, yeah, if I'm not third, pregnant yo. on the 5th, I slept with this other guy on the 25th. If I'm not pregnant on the 5th, then it, it then can't be his it child. It can't be his child. Mr. He's... Kaiser, you don't look yes, like you're buying this at all. I need to say something really bad. <laughs> I want to say something. <laughs> If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Y'all, the reason why I'm not by this, y'all, is because she left with the other guy on the third. I did she not have pregnant. intercourse with she that man anymore. We slept together from the 28th until the 31st, right? No, she, the 1st. She left, she left on the 30th with the other guy, right? For two weeks. On and April now, 3rd? She's pregnant on the 15th. So how do I know it's not the other guy's baby? Well, oh, I, you're saying she went back she to the left other on guy? The third. She left on the third and went back to the other guy uh, on the third. The I mean, third of March or the third of... The, the third of April. Third of April? Yes. The third well, of, we're missing some colors. No, the third of April. <laughs> the third of on April. On this calendar. Ma'am, Your Honor, the third of April, I left and went back, but I never had intercourse with that man again. How do I know that, Your Honor? You don't How... know that. You just have to go off my words. That baby's also tongue-tied. Genetic trait. The baby okay. looks like our three-year-old child. Okay. Same trait. Okay. And you're referring to a medical condition. Yes, ma'am. She, she don't know if that guy's father... That's not true, because I, I... Well, if the other guy didn't have it, but his daddy had it. You see what I'm telling you, Arthur? His daddy did not have it. I... I How does she know that, you Arthur? Questions. How does she know that? She never met the other guy's father. Listen, it is your assertion that because baby Isaac is tongue-tied, and that's a medical condition that Mr. Kaiser has as well, and it's proven to be hereditary and genetic. It can be passed down. You believe that's a further indicator that he is baby Isaac's biological father. Yes, ma'am. And there's and... another part of the proof. What is yes, that? Yes, ma'am. Those teeth that he has in his mouth, he was born with those teeth. Those are called <laughs> neonatal teeth. And Mr. Kaiser's first cousin's child was born with teeth as well. It All is right. to be a genetic trait as well. So another genetic trait is that but he was he born with, with teeth. teeth. Usually people, babies don't develop teeth until later and, on. Yes. He was born. He was born. Teeth. And with that's teeth. another medical condition that you have seen I have heard in Mr. Kaiser's family. I haven't heard yes, about that big genetic trait, though. About the, about the You should the do teeth. your research. I haven't heard about that big genetic trait. I appreciate the testimony, but I want to learn more about this particular medical condition. Ron, could you please escort Dr. McLaurin into the courtroom? She is a doctor of medical dentistry, and I'd like to ask her a few questions. Hello, doctor. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here today discussing a paternity issue as it relates to uh, baby Isaac. And Ms. England has asserted that because Mr. Kaiser suffers from a certain medical condition, tongue-tied, and her child also does, that that's further indicator that Mr. Kaiser is her child's biological father. I know you've been dealing with these issues for a while, over almost 30 years now, yeah. not more. Can you speak to this issue? Well, the research is all over the place um, when it comes to a tongue tie. There is no research that says 100% that if he has a tongue tie, his child will have a tongue tie. Right, see? And the right. research I read said 50-50 chance if one parent so carries it, 100% chance if both parents chance. carry the gene. There is research out there that says that. Is there research that says otherwise as well? Yes. It's not necessarily that it says otherwise. It just, the complexity comes in diagnosing a tongue tie. And it's all over the place, the definition of that. So any research that follows that is um, inconclusive. In my practice, I would say most of my parents report that there is tongue tie in the family. That it's in the family? Yes. So most of your parents, you see your clients, they have someone else in the family that is tongue tied Yes. 
Now, that's not necessarily their father not or their mother. Not necessarily the father or the mother. I have seen mothers. Oh, that, wow. That if the mother has tongue tie, the multiple children will have tongue tie. Um, but there, there's not 100% correlation between tongue tie and the father. So what about babies born with teeth? Now that is a more rare condition. That's, um, that's very rare. And 60% of the families that have children who are born with teeth report that other members of the family were born with teeth. Okay. Wow. So in that situation, the fact that there is a family member in Mr. Kaiser's family. I had no idea, you all, about the teeth. I had no idea. So hearing the testimony of this expert. Yeah. It's kind of, is enlightening. Of, yeah. 18 years ago, cousin saw the ball with teeth 18 years ago. So I guess it is possible. It's possible. She I mean, she said still was with the other guy for. For, for two weeks before, before <clears throat> she got, got the pregnancy. Well, that's why we bring in expert testimony. So, so Because we need we don't to know, understand we don't know. it. We can't find out if this other guy got, had, had people in his family that had... That was Your Honor, I asked, I, I asked him, I asked his sister, I asked his mother. Nobody has any kind of recollection of anybody being tongue-tied in their family. Mr. Kaiser, if baby Isaac is not your biological child, can you still work on the relationship? Or oh. is it over? No, y'all. It's over, y'all. It's over. I can't do it. I can't do it, y'all. It's over. And because is... because I, I've, I've, I've already helped her, helped her raise, helped her, raise her, other, her other child, and I've raised, I've raised the child. And then it, it's going to be a problem, y'all, because this might be the baby of the man who she actually cheated on me with. So how am I going to raise your child? Cheated. I never cheated. I did not get... But you had his phone number get, before you moved number. out. But I did not That's have any kind cheated. of physical relation. You want to talk cheated. about cheating? Talk about if what I, you did. If I had his phone... If I had a phone number... You want to talk about cheating? Talk about what you... If you I had, had plenty number. women's phone numbers. I found how many... No. How no. many have I found because you one, can't hide them out your pant pocket? One, I'll be honest. One. one. And I never have a relationship with him. Your Honor, I used to I have to have, go through this y'all, man's wallet and I found out number, 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 number. Ask him who it was. He started lying to put men's names on the number. Y'all, all right. That is not true. I called the that woman's number true. and she told me what he had on, but what he was doing, where he was going. Can I say something, please? Can I say something, please? Y'all, y'all, after the whole time, those phone numbers that you found, I never slept with none of those people. The, the guy phone number she had, she moved in with him. So listen. <laughs> listen, listen, family. Listen, listen. I listen. never slept with another, with another woman. Now I have to number. ask the question. If baby Isaac is your biological child, Mr. Kaiser, can you all move past all of this arguing over cheating? I, I mean... You all I mean, have been I, I, arguing I, I, I for 25 no minutes straight. I, I don't want to, I don't want I don't want to cheat no more, y'all. I love this woman. You know what I'm it saying? It gets worse at the house. It, Answer my wait, question. Can you repeat the question, y'all? I know you didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we it's taking funny. testimony on tongue tied. You ain't tongue tied today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Got get it. a word in. I want that to be my son, y'all. I do want it to be my son, but I just want to, I just want okay. to make sure it's my son. I want to make sure. That's why you're here. That's right. why you're here. And luckily, thank goodness, I have those results for you. Ron, thank you. the envelope, please. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics. In the case of England versus Kaiser, when it comes to six-month-old Isaac, England, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Kaiser, you are not the father. Are you sure? I'm sorry, Mr. Kaiser. You sure? Are, are you I'm sure? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's gotta be a mistake, right? It's a mistake, right? <laughs> I am so sorry, but it is not a mistake. Oh you are not baby Isaac's father. But he biological can be father. his father. It doesn't matter if DNA or not, he can be that son of that boy's father. <laughs> Just because he has a daddy that don't care, why can't he be the daddy that does? We've been through hell and back. 
Six years, we've been homeless together. We've had to struggle to get where we are now. I don't think it has the end because it's not his blood. Our other child he raises just fine. I understand. We, in this courtroom, recognize that biology <laughs> creates family, of course, but there are also families created through love. When you all came into this courtroom, you told me your relationship was on the line and you needed this answer. But I'm not ready to let go of the relationship, Your Honor. I love this man. This is the longest relationship I've ever been in. And that's for you two to figure out if you can work it out. <laughs> Ms. England, I have to ask you, so do you know for certain that baby Isaac's father is this other man? Yes, ma'am. Man? I did not have intercourse with anybody else. I'm not a thought. <laughs> does this man want to be in his life? No, neither does the family of the man. The only people that help with this child is him and his family. Mr. Kaiser, what would you like okay. to say, sir? I still want to be there for a brother. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, you are suing the defendant because you claim that your 20-year marriage has been based on a complete fraud. Now, you state that it was not until one year into your marriage that Ms. Jackson told you that you may not be the biological father of James Jackson IV. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. And when today's DNA results are revealed, you demand that Ms. Jackson pay you $5,000 for emotional distress and finally sign the divorce papers. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Jackson, you admit to having sex with another man around the time your son was conceived, but you claim that you did not deceive Mr. Jackson in any way, nor did you force him to marry you. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Jackson, how has your marriage been based on a fraud, exactly? Well, Your Honor, I, I think I've been tricked, Your Honor. Um, she knew my past, and uh, she knew that once she told me that she was pregnant, that I wanted um, a father in my son's life, like I didn't have a father in my life. So, once she told me, told me that, we got married in December of 95, a few months after she got pregnant, and come up a year into the marriage, and I find out that he may not be my, my child, Your Honor. And so, you stepped up to the plate and married her? Yes, ma'am, two <laughs> months after she told me. You go to the doctor's appointment, you were there when James Jackson IV was born, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. You obviously gave him your name. I gave him my name. He's the I, fourth. I, um... He signed cut, the birth certificate? Signed the birth certificate, he was the there. Billiken cord. He cut the billiken cord. I was there helping with his homework. I uh, speed and so, your involvement with this young man Yes, ma'am. This handsome young man has been... Yes. You, you're his dad. Yes, I mean, graduation, I was there. You were there. Um, it's Rosalind Meats. It's Rosalind Meats. I, I was there. His band, I was there. So, take me back up to this relationship. We, we actually, we met in Job Corps. So, we, we, we both took nursing classes together. The first time we had, we had sex was in the Greengrass Motel. What is that exactly? When we was in, on the campus, we couldn't have sex in our dorms, because it was separate dorm rooms. So we had to wait till nighttime to go out in the field and, and have sex on the green grass hotel. Oh, you called that the grass? Oh, the grass. I got it. Yes. No, I got and and it. Actually, actually, the first time. Now, <laughs> he wanted a family, and uh, he was not really tricked, because he went down to Kentucky to visit me. Okay? He lived in Georgia. He and... wanted to follow me to Kentucky. And so, Mr. Jackson, did you follow her to Kentucky? Did you want to have a family? With her, it, it, was, it wasn't a family thing at that time. We was just going together. And actually, I was just going to see my girlfriend that lives in Kentucky. So, I were you in her. any other relationship before you became pregnant? Before you figured out you were pregnant, were you in another relationship? I had a boyfriend or a friend or hangout buddies that we'll go to the beach, we get drunk, we hang out, we, we party. I, 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 was, I was a little older than he is, but, uh, you know, I wasn't really looking for, for him so... to be in my life. This guy was looking like a nerve. I didn't think he was gonna amount to much. He had a pick on his head. He had on matching clothes. He had tennis shoes on, and he always see he by himself. He had a pick in his hair and matching clothes and tennis. No shoes. matching. Oh, they didn't match. No. So one day I just went on and talked to him. And so you ended up having a sexual relationship. Yeah. Did you use protect? 
Did you use protection? Yes, ma'am. But see, Miss... Me, Your Honor, we... I think Mr. Jackson is the one that tricked me. He and I kind of uh, started hanging out, start play, being playful and all that. And then we went in the shower and... One thing lead to another, but I didn't know. So, <laughs> let me ask you something. Obviously, you failed to use protection at some point or we wouldn't yeah, be here. Yeah, Your Honor, the only time that we did not use protection was one time, and I know it only takes one, but during that whole time, we're going out. Well, sometimes we'll go out and get drunk. We go to a hotel. One time, I can, I, I, um, I see... Okay, uh, basically, I just needed to confirm that at some point, you had sex without using protection, right? Yes. Why? I don't need all the details of the sexual okay. history. Okay. Um, what made you just decide to marry her instantly like that, within a couple of months? Well, when she told me she was pregnant, you know, that's, that's what I think the right thing to do because I didn't have a father in my life. I was going to be a father in my, my son's life. So... And that's really the basis of your suit is that you feel like she did this all, it was all a fraud. Right, because... Uh, she manipulated and defrauded you. Right, because up until... No, actually, no, now, I never knew that it was somebody else that could be been the father. I just, it, I just had doubts in the dates and time. You Let's talk about this doubt. Okay. The, the, when did the doubts begin to set in? The only time that, we, that she could have got pregnant was those three days out of August. Talk to me about those days. Okay, August 95... 11, 12th, and 13th is the only three days she could have got pregnant. In August of 1995, it'd be the 11th, 12th, and 13th. That's correct. Okay, from that we got sex married. With Jackson. Okay. And my uh, son is born on June 8th, 1996. June 8th. All right. Why are you doubtful about these? Because it, in, in, unless he's not my son, or you're looking at the only woman that's been pregnant 10 and a half months in history. So the dates just don't add up. The, from, from, from August 11th, 12th, and 13th to June 8th y your is, Honor. is 10 and a half months. So you feel like the dates are not adding up? Your Honor. Because that means, in your mind, you cannot be the father because that's too many weeks. That's too many weeks, months, days, years. <laughs> your Honor. Y yes. Really, I think Mr. Jackson got upset because I told him we did the math and he thought he was going to have his son being born around his birthday, his birthday, June, May, May the 7th. It actually so supposed to be born on May the 7th. What but... he's saying, Ms. Jackson, is that if he counts back, it's over 10 months' time that you were pregnant, which we know and pregnancies are usually 40 weeks. And, Your Honor, excuse me, but they induced her labor, so that wasn't her due, the due date. They induced Your her Honor. labor. She made them take the baby. Two doctors and one midwife told me that that couldn't be the conception date, period. I don't the know. dates you gave me, yeah. August 11th, 12th, and 13th, the, could not be the conception the date only for a dates. child born June the 8th. No, it can't be. That's what so they told me. Th and, th and that's uh -huh. why you really began to doubt. Yes, Ms. Jackson, do you admit that there is a slight reason to doubt? What percentage do you... 80-20, Your Honor. It was just because... 80-20? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. 80% maybe the other guy kind of told and he's kind of light-skinned. Wait a minute. 80-20? Who's the 80? The, the, the other guy. But we use protection, Your Honor. <sighs> I was a little drunk. We were partying. We got up and... It was the next day, and we was out there at the beach, and then it was like, uh... It don't kind of... tell me anything Please. else. I, I don't want to know anything else. This is the first else. time I'm hearing this, Your Honor. Except... <laughs> this is the very first except time. I know now you're lead to the fact that you all had sex then. But we always use protection. Okay, but you 80% believe the other gentleman could be your son's father. Yeah, he kind of looked like, but, uh... Did she ever say to you that this was not your son? Did she ever give you an, an, any indication? Did she say that? As we drinking again, Your Honor, she tells me in the hotel that I, I wasn't the father. Yeah. I possibly could be the father one time, and it kind of messed me up to then. Your Honor? She said she never and did. And do you remember saying that? See, this is how it happened. Mr. Jackson and I telling you the whole thing. Mr. Jackson begged me to come get him out of jail court. 
to go and get him out so that he could go in hotels with me. So that's when we would drink. It's not like I was an alcoholic and it was not like he was drinking all the time. Did you ever either. tell him that but James Jackson the fourth was not his son? He got me drunk in the house and trying to get the truth out of me, Your Honor. So and, I, yes, I was so did he know get the it. truth out of you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so wait a minute. You said he got you drunk yes, and tried to get the truth out of yes, you, and you told him that James Jackson the Fourth was not his child. Yeah, it, is that, that, that the truth? He always tell that to his daughter too. That the so boys is that don't look what like you him. believed, or were you saying what you believed he wanted to hear? He got me confused, Your Honor, because I was drunk. Okay, he got me drunk. So. I would like to hear from your son. Mr. Jackson, this is a lot to hear. Um, tell me your perspective. I mean, what, when you hear all of this, this is your dad. This is the man you've grown up with your whole life. Did you ever know that there was a doubt relating to your paternity? Um, Your Honor, this man before you has always been my dad. He's been there through my graduations. He's been there through my wrestling meets, band, everything. Beautiful. And I can see, Mr. Jackson, this really hurts you. Mr. Jackson, the fourth. Did you ever have any knowledge that there was a question relating to your paternity? It was one night, Your Honor. I was sleep. I overheard them arguing. I climbed downstairs, you know, sneaking up on the argument, and I overheard that he possibly couldn't have been my father. I was five years old at the time. I really didn't pay no attention to it because he will always be there for me. So I would think it was just a petty thing to say during arguments, you know? He would be Downstairs. Downstairs, and hit, my mom would be upstairs. And I would think it was just, you know, a little doghouse, you know, him, you know, get his punishment for, for the arguments or whatever. So Yo, I really now. didn't think nothing of it, you know? I was a child then. But, but you weren't understanding that there were issues and right. they were having disagreements because they were talking about whether or not the man you believed to be your father was actually your biological father, that perhaps there was someone else? Um, other than that, it was no, there was no relative, no auntie, no uncle saying, that's not your father, no random man. Never had uncle, that? Never had that. Did your dad ever give you any clue? Um, we would possibly sit down and, and briefly talk about it. Uh, for example, he would sit me down and, and say, uh, how long does a baby stay in the, in, the, in the womb? And I would say, nine months. He was like, well, it took you 11 or 10. And I would say, um, is, I would, I, as he's older now. I, as <laughs> I'm older, better. as I'm older, as I can understand things more better. So I guess he was trying to prepare me. But it would be brief conversation, so I wouldn't be too heavily on the fact. So you feel like he was, in his own way, preparing you? In his own way, yes. So where do we go from here? What's at stake here? If, in fact, it's determined that this young man, Mr. Jackson IV, is determined not to be your biological child. You will divorce your wife. If, he, if you... he's not my son or if he is my son biologically, we, I, we, I'm still wanting to divorce. Your because Honor... I, I have a girlfriend okay. that's wanting to get married. So wait a minute now. Your Honor... So sh you've been trying to get her to sign these divorce papers? We've, we've been doing this for, for 10, about 10 years. What, Your Honor? We got married for life, okay? We got married, I have, Mr. Jackson and I had a conversation that he was gonna get married in church too, but he didn't marry me in church. So now Mr. Jackson understood that once we are married, we are married I got for married life. On a lie. Regardless, a, whether a it's a lie or not, we, are, we were married. We were living together. We were building our family. And so and, you do not have any intention of signing divorce papers? No, ma'am, because uh, if he wants to get divorced, he got to pay himself, but I'm not going to participate on that, taking care of his girlfriend. So he wanted to marry her, go ahead and divorce. Okay, fine, that's fine, but I'm not put, put, paying a penny for it. But... Okay. <laughs>
I think I've heard enough. He... I am ready for the results. <laughs> Bro. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Jackson, the third versus Jackson. When it comes to 19-year-old James Jackson, the fourth, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Jackson, you are his father. Great news. Right? Awesome news. Yeah. That's wonderful. You happy, Mr. Jackson? Oh, yes. <laughs> Perfect. How does it feel to finally just know for sure? Oh, it's a, it's a load off my chest, Your Honor. Thank you. You're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. That's why we're here. M Mr. Jackson, you came to court with a suit for $5,000 for emotional distress. We've determined now he is your biological child. And so, the emotional distress, in terms of thinking the entire time that he was not, is not something I can award you damages for. With that said, your claim is dismissed. Judgment for the defendant. About this family. Ultimately, you share a beautiful son. How you move on from here is gonna be your decision. You have to talk about this, you have to be you have to communicate. We have counseling and resources for you, and I wish you all the very best of luck, and I'm happy for you both. Mm, thank thank you. Court is adjourned. <laughs> Ms. Reed, you say the father of your three-month-old son, Keandre, was tragically murdered early this year. You claim his mother, Ms. Campbell, is the biological grandmother, and you are here to prove it today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Campbell, you claim you've never heard of Ms. Reed prior to your son's death, nor did your son ever tell you he was expecting a child. You feel Ms. Reed is motivated by money and you refuse to accept her baby until the DNA proves otherwise. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Reed, explain. Why are you so desperate to prove that Ms. Campbell is your son's grandmother? Today, Your Honor, I'm here to prove it because family means everything to me. Because when I didn't meet my dad, I didn't meet my father until I was 14. And I don't want that for a key, Andre. So I'm here today to prove to Miss Campbell, uh, to, yeah, to Angela, that, um, that she is his biological grandchild. But inside my heart, like, I try not to be mean about it, but inside my heart, I feel like she's being selfish about it. And I know that she don't know me, but I'm just here to prove that Keandre is her grandchild. I'm not being selfish, I'm just being cautious. I understand. Ms. Campbell, I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. All of you. And I know this is very difficult. <laughs> you say you're being cautious. Yes. Can you tell the court why you feel that way? Being, uh, I mean, I love ba I love all babies, don't get me wrong. But if it's any, a baby that belongs to me, I would like to know that. And I don't want to fall in love with a baby and then end up, I can't be with that child anymore. And you're afraid, you've, you've lost your son, you don't yeah. want to lose the baby. Exactly. Because he'll be another version of my son. Right. <laughs> you can understand that, can't you, Miss Reed? Yes, ma'am. See, y'all on the arm. Like, me and Kendrick were, like, true enough, we was friends with benefits, but he was also, like, my best friend, Your Honor. So, like, when he died, it's like a part of me left with him. And how long were you? You say you were friends with benefits. How long was this arrangement, um, this relationship? How long? It was eight years, Your Honor. 
So even while you were in relationships with other people and he was, you were still having sex with one another? Yes. So, Ms. Campbell, I'm... I know we have to have such difficult testimony right now, but we're just trying to understand this as it relates to the paternity matter. I need to ask you, Ms. Reed has testified that she was a friend with benefits. Did your son ever mention a friend... No, Your Honor. ...in Ms. Reed? No, Your Honor. I knew nothing about her up until my son passed, and I heard... I heard she gave me a few phone calls after his death. And that was the only time I heard from her. She, she told me that she was pregnant by my son. So I was I was curious on um, how come I was just not finding out about uh, her being pregnant by my son. And your son never even mentioned Ms. Reed was having his baby, potentially, that someone was having his baby? No, Your Honor. Nothing? No, Your Honor. Not a, not a thing. And when he passed, how many months along were you, Ms. Reed? I was five, Your Honor. And the day that um, he... Um, Kendra died February the 24th um, of this year. And when I found out, it was February the 25th. After I just left the doctor's office, finding out that I was having a, um, a little boy. And that was something that Kendra always wanted, was a son. He always told me he always wanted a son. <laughs> but he never told me that he was about to be pregnant by one. So you know he wanted a son, but he never said, Mom, and I'm having one. No. I always heard from Kendrick. Kendrick would always tell me what was going on, especially if he was having a baby. And what was your relationship like with your son? It sounds had, like you were very close. Yeah, we had a real close relationship. Because I always used to tell Kendrick, I don't care what you do, what nobody say about you, 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 you keep your head up. And you always call me, let me know what's going on with you because I never know what's going on with you. And all I tell all of them, I want to keep up with all y'all because, see, I stayed, I stayed in Troy and he stayed down there in Montgomery. And I always tell them, y'all call me regardless. Don't let me have to come call y'all. I won't hear from y'all after, after two, three, four months before I hear from any, from any of y'all because you never know what happened. And just so happened, I had to get my other son to come to my house and tell me my son was gone. Oh. <laughs> and that was the worst feeling of my life. Oh, I know. I never want to go through that again. That's why I tell all of them, never not call me. Tell months, being months and months without calling me or let me know what's going on with y'all. And you feel like with all that communication and everything you shared, if he thought he was having a son, you feel like he would have told. Yeah, him. he would have told me that he wouldn't have did not did because he always would tell me if he, you know, if he's having a baby by someone, because he always used to talk about if I had a son, what, if I had a son, what would he do? He had that girl, but he never did get a chance to get uh, to live and see him having a boy. So. Ms. Reed, can you tell the court, when was the first time you met Ms. Campbell? It was... Um, the first time I met Ms. Campbell, it was the day we went to the front of home to see Kendrick in, you know, Kendrick body. That's when I told her who I was, and I told her that, um, you know, I was the one who having a child by her son, by Kendrick. And, like, I gave her ultrasound pictures stating that it was, you know, it was a boy, and ultrasound pictures of the baby. And I was like, you know, and that's when I, me and her both, like, I told her if she wanted a DNA test, I would give her one. And we both agreed, you know, that we went, once the baby was born, we was gonna have a DNA test. Do you remember that conversation, Ms. Campbell? Yes, Your Honor, I do. And you agreed to the DNA test because you did want to know. Exactly. Did you participate in the birth? Were you there? No, I, know, I didn't know anything about when she, um when she had the baby. I didn't know... Only time I found out when she had the baby, when she contacted me um, in July. July, I think it was July 3rd. But if you had such a, 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 a cooperative conversation with Miss Campbell and she agreed about the DNA test and you're certain that her son is Keandre's biological father, why not include her in all of the like the birth, the doctor's appointments, the updates. Why not include her? Okay, like at the birth, 
the birth was so sudden, Your Honor, because I supposed to have Keandre on July the 1st. Keandre came June the 30th. And so the first person I contacted was D. And I told him I was having Keandre that day. And when I came back out, I texted and told D that I had um, Keandre. And he was like, well, I'm gonna come tomorrow to see the baby. So I said, okay, good. But by me not thinking about Miss Campbell right then because I was so highly sedated under the medicine, Your Honor, it's just the first person I, caught, I thought about was just D to contact. But I'm sorry that I, like, I'm sorry. I'm truly and I'm sorry that I did not contact you to, like, for the birth or anything like that. Yeah, because I felt like if he is my grandson, I should have been there. I should have been the first one to be called. That's why I said I'm sorry. I did not know. I'm sorry. Like, I'm truly is. From the bottom of my heart, I am really sorry. I'd like to hear from the witness. Sir, can you please stand? <laughs> Step over to the podium and state your name for the court. My name is DeQuandre Campbell. Okay. And Mr. Campbell, you are Miss Campbell's other son? Yes, ma'am. You are Kendrick's brother? Yes. All right. You remember Ms. Reed calling you and saying that the baby was coming? Yes, ma'am. Do you believe that Keandre is your brother Kendrick's biological son? Yes, ma'am. I believe he's the, he's the father because I, I don't believe, you know, she would take us through all the, all the what she's been taking us through to, you know, to, for it not to be his. So, Ms. Reed, I want to ask you, how are you so certain that Kendrick is Keandre's biological father when you admit you all were not in an exclusive committed relationship, you both dated other people too? How do you know for certain? Because, you know, around about the time, about the date of conception, it's in September. And the, during the whole month of September, me and Kendrick was surrounding each other all the time. And you weren't having sex with anybody else during that time? No, ma'am. No, Your Honor. DeQuandre, you may have a seat. Miss Campbell, you've met Keandre, right? Yes, ma'am. You've seen the baby. When was the first time you saw him? The first time I saw Keandre was in the um, court where we had was going to try to do a DNA. And... She didn't ask me. I mean, I, she didn't. I would thought she would have asked me, could I hold him? Could I, I you know, I could see him. This is your grandbaby. She didn't introduce me to him, even though I knew that's the baby. And that made me, it made me even more not think that he's my grandson because I'm like, if he's my grandson, why can't I hold him? Why can't I look at him? Ms. Reed, that does sound odd. I understand, Your Honor, but, but it was like, it was kind of cool in the courtroom. Where, where we was at. And Keandre had on a, like, it's like a onesie. And he was in nothing but two months at the time. And, you know, by it being cold and then plus at the same time, Keandre was asleep. I understand where you're coming from, but given the circumstances, it would feel odd to me as a grandmother. Yeah, I think it's just because of the death benefits. You feel like she's more concerned about the money? Money, yes. Is that the case, Miss Reed? No, ma'am. No, Your Honor. Not saying it's in a bad way, but since Keandre been here on this earth, Your Honor, I've been taking care of Keandre every since. You know, because that's just the type of parent, um, like parent I am. And I don't ask nobody for nothing because I feel like he's my, like, yeah, true enough, he's my responsibility, but I feel like since by him being my responsibility, I'm gonna have to make stuff work for me. And we really are dealing with some very high stakes as well. Yes, At this point, if Kendrick is his biological father, he's unfortunately going to grow up never having known his father. But I need to ask you something. I feel like for you to be involved with him for so many years and you to admit that you both dated other people, are you sure, Ms. Reed? Yes. Sure that you didn't date anybody else during that time? No. Because it wasn't like you all were in a relationship. Right. But at the time, no, ma'am, I did not date anybody else. Kendrick was the only person that I dated at that time. Now, he had other hidden agenda because the day that I came out to Miss Angela, 
Miss Angela revealed that Kendra had a whole nother girlfriend. So obviously, Kendra had a lot going on. So there's a lot at stake here because truthfully, neither one of you have very real trust because you don't know one another. No. Yes, right. No, I don't. I think it's time we get the results. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Because there wasn't a blood card available to test the DNA of the deceased, Kendrick Campbell, we performed a DNA test with his surviving parent, Angela Campbell. These are the results. In the case of Reed versus Campbell, when it comes to three-month-old Keandre Reed, it has been determined by this court the percentage of relatedness is 99% you are related. Oh, can I hear you? Thank you for that. I'm, I'm, thank I you, told thank you. you. Thank you. I needed that. <laughs> now I got my son all over again. I told you, Mr. Campbell, you want to go stand with your mom? <laughs> you all have been through so much. Sometimes it's, you know, it just feels so dark. It's hard to find a silver lining. It's hard to find some light. It's hard to find some hope. And I just hope this truth today, Miss Campbell. Yes, it is. It's closure. That's all I wanted. Yes. Closure. Now I got it. Thanks to you. Oh. I say often, they call me your honor, but it really is my honor. It really is. It is truly my honor to help you find the closure you need to just keep trying to move forward. I will. 